Oh, I'm live? Awesome. All right, Marco with washmart.com. It's early, unless you're in the East Coast, then you're probably already up and going, going at it. We're gonna cover hot boxes today. Some people still don't know about them. We actually use hot boxes on some of our machines and there's an advantage to hot boxes is modularity. Where normally whenever you buy like a normal pressure pro skid, it's somewhere in the ballpark of like a 40 by 50 or a 45 by 45 and it takes up a large cube. For people doing flatbed builds, that can take up a lot of space. What's nice is if you, you're looking for a skid, but uh, the little, the pull. Well, oh, so, up here? So imagine having one of these little skids, right? And you have a little pocket of space somewhere where you can fit this no problem. Well, you have another little area where you can fit a heating element. And there's two different options. We have horizontal or vertical. And it makes it to where you can actually position your equipment wherever you needed to have a position so you can accommodate the water tanks that you're having. This is actually really good for people also that do recovery because recovery systems take up a lot of space and you need as much tank space as you can get. So for our guys that do recovery, hot boxes are not a bad option. This is one of those things that make it to where you can mod modularize your, your setup so that you can have you can have a hot box on the opposite side of the truck. It does not have to be where uh, right next to the power washer. What are these rated for? What can you use these for? So you can run these up to eight gallons a minute, 10 gallon a minute. I call it piss warm water. Uh, once you get to where you want to heat 10 gallons a minute effectively to 200 degrees, uh, we do have a machine that we sell. It's going to be a power jet, but those get closer to the ballpark of $15,000 because the burner needs to be rated for a million BTUs. The BTUs on our burners for the five to eight gallon a minutes, uh, they range from uh, the ADC burner runs at 385,000 BTU, which we have on some of these. And then on some of these machines, we have the SDC burner which is rated for 555,000 BTUs. What does that mean? BTU means British Thermal Unit. What, what, what that indicates is what the amount of heat is going to produce based on your equipment. So the advantage of having 555,000 BTUs is that you can get your water hotter. What's the negative? You're gonna use way more fuel. You're gonna be running anywhere from three to five gallons per hour, depending on how you have your, your fuel nozzle set up and your size. Uh, generally, we always use a B type, not the A type. Uh, I think we've only used A type on the, on the three phase units. I don't know why uh, Fred does it that way. I know it has to do with the spray pattern. I'm not gonna go into that. Um, but the 555,000 BTUs is gonna get an eight gallon a minute somewhere in the ballpark of 180 to 190 degrees, depending on your, 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 your water temperature, assuming that it's 75 degrees going in. Um, if you're running an ADC burner with an eight gallon a minute with those same circumstances, you're gonna get around 160 degrees, which for fleet washing, that's sufficient. For guys that are doing you know, gas stations, it's sufficient, but I do like 200 degrees better, which is why I like five and a half gallons per minute. If you're in a five and a half gallons a minute with an ADC burner at 385,000 BTUs, you're gonna get right around 190 degrees. With an SDC burner, we can actually use a smaller flame stabilizer, which is gonna be called the F220, and use a, uh, I believe we use a 2.75 or a 2.5 uh, size fuel nozzle. So you're going to burn about two and a half gallons per hour approximately, but you get to 210 degrees constantly. Uh, 210 degrees, if you're doing oil spill cleanups, hydraulic fluid spill cleanups, which is something I do, you're going to find that that extra heat is really awesome. If you're doing a lot of oil stains, the higher the heat, the lighter the stain. How do these compare to others on the market that you've seen? Oh, man. I've only ran a handful of other uh, coils. What I don't like is that a lot of coils that are in the market, what they'll do is they'll just use a larger coil and instead of doing a four pancake, they'll use a five pancake and still use the same burner. What we found is that doesn't give a substantial temperature rise. 
The argument against us is that, well, we're only burning two gallons of diesel per hour, but the sizing of those coils and the price of those coils are so much higher, I don't see the value in it. Um, also, the larger the coils, the more expensive it is to keep them at a Schedule 80 because if anybody knows anything about coiling, the bigger they are, the easier they are to break and they have to be made more rigid. So uh, I'm not a big fan of getting the extremely large coils. I'm just not. It, it also increases weight on your trailer or on your flatbed. This is as efficient for the size and the heating capability as we can make it for the system that we have. Are these difficult to hook up? No, you literally just, so there's two, okay. So we have two wires on here that mm -hmm. you just connect to the battery, just like you do with your key start pressure washer. And uh, that's, and then you connect the outlet of the pump uh -huh. has a quick connect. You, you can take that off and then either hardwire it or you can quick connect it to the inlet of the hot box, which is where the flow switch is located. And then the water travels through the coil and then there's an exit quick connect on the coil that you can either send to your hose reel or simply put your hose to and then start washing. Uh, these hot boxes do come with a fuel tank already in place. I believe there are 12 gallons and it's all stainless, which is great for our guys that are on the coast that are dealing with oxidation and, and, and the paint chipping off. Um, the footprint on the verticals people like because they're 26 by 30, which is extremely compact. When uh, would you choose the horizontal over the vertical besides just the size? So for people that are on city streets all the time, vertical is the way to go. If you're doing oil field cleaning and you're, or if you're in Louisiana and going down a bunch of back roads, South Texas going down a bunch of back roads, I recommend the horizontal hot box. The vertical hot boxes are n are more temperamental to harsh road conditions. So if you install this on a trailer, the imp I've noticed that the impact on these can cause the coil to shift uh, and shear the bolts. So if you're just in Houston and you're just if you're a bit hood cleaner and all you're doing is going from restaurant to restaurant and you're just driving on concrete and, and asphalt, that's for the mo for the most part. Not okay, Westheimer Boulevard's a little different. Westheimer, the roads are just like, I mean, it's a really nice road, but like as far as the businesses, but the roads like do not keep up with it. And it's bumpy. If you're driving on bumpy roads all the time to go to your customers, I don't recommend the vertical. I recommend the horizontal. Chad Ramirez uh, needs to bring his hydro tech in to have us look at his hot water unit. So let's talk about that with the repairs right now. We're not doing repairs, Chad, in-house. We're sending them to Pedro Garza over at PWR, which is actually going to be closer to you. He's located off of Alameda, Genoa, uh, about, he's really close to I-45 in Alameda, Genoa. That's where we've been sending all the repairs. We currently do not have a repair center. We are only parts, chemicals, and new equipment sales, and then we send the repairs to Pedro. So that's where everything's been going. Pedro, his turnaround time is very fast and he's he's very good at what he does. He's been doing this for I think 13 years now. He comes from the same place that my dad started, uh, which was originally Pertex and then All Clean Industries and now it's the Hotsy Shop, but he's, 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 he's well versed and he is good at what he does. But that's where we're sending people for service. So let's talk about the Siamese kit real quick. So if you- Oh, I'm sorry, one thing. Oh, sure. If you are running a Predator engine, you cannot run a hot box unless you change the alternator. The factory alternator is only seven amps. It will not work. You need to make sure you have at least a 16 amp alter alternator for an ADC burner and an 18 amp alternator if you're using the SDC burner. I just wanted to throw that out there. And that would be one of those, the CH440? The CH440 Kohler has an 18 amp alternator. It can power an ADC or SDC burner. Most GX 690s, if not all of them that I know of, they all have a 17.7 amp alternator, so they're going to be and able to cross And we have plenty board. of the engines in stock, so if you yes. didn't want to buy a new machine if you yes. needed it because you needed hot water, we have the kits to build your yes. own. Yes, and We you have can... the base plates, the pumps, the gearbox. Unloaders, we literally have all the things that you need to DIY build your own pressure washer however you want it. 
We have uh, we have a bunch of 10 gallon a minute pumps, five and a half gallon a minute pumps. I think we're out of eight gallon a minute pumps. We might have one or we two. We have a 10 over there. No, we have. I think Robert we, got the last eight. But he got the last eight, and then we have yeah, we have like. Oh, there's a Comet eight though. I we believe. have a Comet eight, and then we have a we have like 12 10 gallon a minute pumps. We keep finding more of them. Okay, so. We'll go back to the Siamese kit. Yeah, I just you can build cover. your own, or you could Siamese if you need more gallon per minute also. So, a lot of people like getting one big engine and one big pump, and this is the reason why I hate that. Imagine having just one machine, you drive two and a half hours away to do a big ass construction, post construction cleanup oh, job. Hold on, do you know how much that 10 gallon per minute GP is? Uh, those are all AR pumps, and they are between 900 and 1,000. I think we have them on a special right now. They're we'll get you a price, Chad. I'll yeah, we'll get, get you a price. You. But yeah, we have, we have, those are 3,000 at 10 for 1750 RPMs. It's the equivalent to a TSF2221 if you're a general pump person. It's the equivalent of a TWS130 if you're a Comet person. This is gonna be the XWL30 G10 or is this something. It, it's, 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 a, it's a weird part number. So. What I, the reason why I've been going more to doing multiple five and a half machines, oh, this is David. If you get <laughs> orders from Washmart, he's the one packaging the orders, and he, he just did the thumbs up thing that he always does when, when he gets recorded. Uh, he always shows up early to make sure everything gets packaged so that it's shipping out you know, immediately. So um, we are... Siamese kit. Uh, Siamese kit. So the reason why I'm liking the five and a halves is... If you really want 10 to 11 gallons a minute, it's really cheap to have two five and a halfs and just plug them in together. That's all you really have to do. The reason why I like running five and a halfs is if one machine starts having problems, I still have five and a half gallons a minute to finish the job. There are people that are going to watch this video and think about how pissed they were whenever their belts busted, their unloader gets stuck, the check valve stopped working and you're losing pressure, whatever the issue might be, whenever you only have one machine and it breaks, you have no machine. That you have, you have no machine. I took it a step further on one of my fleet washing rigs that's, at very, that's in Midland. We have one hot water five and a half and I have two cold water five and a halfs. That third one we don't actually use. It's just there in the event that one of them has an issue, I have a backup machine so that I'm not in a rush and having to overnight a bunch of things that doesn't actually get overnighted because the shipping companies don't overnight shit anymore. Uh, that's a big advantage using five and a half. So you really wanna use a, 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 a Mondo? Well, you can. Just get two five and a half gallon a minute machines. Bam, 11 gallons a minute. Run two 25, 06 orifice nozzles on your surface cleaner put this in one machine put this in the other machine attach all your pressure hose here and you're ready to go Damn, that's easy once you get to 13 gallons a minute that's the limit at 3 8 if you're trying to do 16 gpm and sign using 2 8 you need half inch hoses. So you'll have two three eighths hoses going into a half inch T being sent out on a half inch hose because your limit is right. At, it's between 13 and 14 where the choke point is with three eighths pressure hose. You'll um, be very disappointed. That's another reason why I do sometimes use eights and I'll pair an eight with a five and a half on a trailer because that is the highest GPM I can get. There's Chris, I am sorry. <laughs> formerly <laughs> oh, from Tank Depot. Uh, he, we are selling a lot of tanks. He's very knowledgeable in the tank industry. And we are absolutely selling tanks. If you're needing a quote on tanks, uh, they start at 65. This is one of the 65 gallon tanks right here that we carry. Uh, and they're rigid as hell. Uh, that's one thing I do like about these. And another thing I like about them is a lot of us are using a uh, Hudson valve on our tanks and on the ones that are round all the way it's not really even but because I have this flange here I can install a bulkhead and a drop tube or a bulkhead and a Hudson valve 
and, uh, and, 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 and you have no issues. It's, it's, it's extremely simple. And these are also- How would you feel about doing, installing a Hudson float valve video later? Yeah, we can definitely do one. And, and uh, we're able to install bulkheads for your um, tanks. We're able to install different lids on your tanks. If you do want a different lid, please let us know. Um, I do cut some of these out myself. So if you want one with an extra different size lid, do let me know so I don't have to do double the work. Yeah. Uh, just give me a call. Uh, we do horizontal tanks, uh, vertical tanks, and the basins, as you've seen in our last video. Um, and we can actually install them as well. There is a fee for that. Uh, but yes, How come can on down. get in touch with you? Uh, you can either call me at the Washmart number. 713-979-7532. Uh, yes. I will learn it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can come on down <laughs> here. Um or you can shoot me an email. My email is Christian, that's C-H-R-Y-S-T-I-A-N, at washmart.com. Uh, if you come on down, um, if I don't have the tank, we can get it. it takes us about a day or two. Um, we do have to bring them in. If we have it in stock, then we'll be able to get it out. We also got the IBC totes. Uh, the Recon it is a brand new bottle, brand new valve. They are inspected to T. Uh, and the cages from an uh, older tote. Um, and if you want a completely brand new tote, the chances of getting a completely brand new tote from anywhere are real slim. Yeah. Most of them are going to be a recon tote. Yeah. So if they tell you it's a new tote, it's probably a lot. It's, well, it's a recon yeah. tote. Refurbished cage, yeah. new bottle. Yeah, and a lot of, and the knowledge is not out there. A lot of people are using that to up the price, but we're as honest as we can be. We always try to offer the best price up front. When people say, can you do a discount? No, I've already discounted it as much as I can up front. So on the oh, sizes of uh, tanks. Jared wants to know what size range is on the tank. I was just about to cover that. Um, Sherman. <coughs> yes. I have them memorized. 65, 135, 220, 330, 550. Those are the sizes for the washers that are out there. Those are going to be the sizes that... Um, they that, that that we get, and we can get them almost same day. Does anybody like those freestanding tanks anymore? The big like thousand gallons with the hole in the middles. Those I haven't seen those in a long time. They used to be popular to be for a while popular, before yeah. I left the industry and then came back. Yeah, but we the a lot of people do the verticals now uh, mm -hmm. if they want something com you know compatible to that. And on the verticals, we can go seventy five, a hundred gallon. 200 gallon, 300 gallon, 500 gallon, and 1,000 gallon. Um, and we, like Marco said, we can get them almost same day. There yeah. is hardly any lead time. One thing I like about these tanks, I love how they do black markings on the side. A lot of the tanks that we sold in the past, you have to literally get right up on it, and older people can't see the numbers at all, like my dad. Um, so or this makes it where you actually like know, me. or with people with glasses, and uh, so this makes it really easy to read. And another thing that I really like about this particular 65 gallon tank is if you don't like this size lid, we can cut at this portion a larger lid. Why does that matter? Imagine getting a drum kit of R soap one or R soap two and having to mix it. Well, if you're using a paddle or your wand, you have limited access to how you can paddle in here. But if you have a larger lid it's easier to pour your contents it's easier to mix your contents that's the advantage of having a larger lid that is the advantage of us having chris here is he is able to do, he has done this thousands of times thousands of times, of thousands of times. Yeah, every, yeah it takes me about a couple minutes to do it uh <laughs> you get your way outside if you want to go get a drink real quick or a soda uh Gas station. By the time you come back, I'll have it done. Yeah, go have lunch at. Brick go oven. have lunch at yeah. a Bricks Oven right down the road. If he, if anybody ever says I need a professional to cut into this to make sure no mistakes are made, this is that professional right here. This is the guy that does that. Yeah. Yeah. This is the guy that's done it so many times. It's like art. Me, if I took the saw to this, I would probably have some issues. I have never tried it. We should do a side by side Man, with me I don't, never I'm doing of screwing it. Screwing up these, and these expert. tanks. We'll do it. Yeah, <laughs> I can, I can fun, pretty right? much fix it. If I'm here, I can fix it. Um, another thing, guys, <laughs> that we offer on our tanks, uh, we actually have a gasket on the lid. And a lot of people like this gasket. Um, every now and then, as the tank gets older, it starts leaking from here. 
Uh, especially when you're driving down the road, it's splashing That's everywhere. That's really good for bleach. It yeah. keeps it from the gases from exiting the tank. Yeah, and so this, okay. this gasket comes with our tanks. So we'll uh, actually install this. It's actually in there. You can't pull it out. Um, a lot of other tanks like Norwesco, Ace Rotomolt, they don't offer this. Um, they're kind of on assembly line. They're just, let's go, let's get it done. And <clears throat> we do pay attention to detail here. So we'll do that. We have the stainless steel screws. Um, and just like every other leg tank, they are hollow legs. So you're able to use the legs right there in the corner. Now, if you see that little dent there, that little dent is going to be from this little island here. And these are threaded inserts, so you'll be able to thread in there if you wish. I like that. <laughs> when they're made, the threaded insert is actually in the mold. Oh. Oh. It's actually in the mold, and it is done as the tank is being made. Um, a lot of people are scared, and they're worried that um, <clears throat> that they're done when the, the tank's cold. And it's no, it's, it's done when the tank's hot. It is covered under warranty. It starts cracking from there. Um, if you ever had to do a warranty claim, uh, yeah, I didn't realize these have like a three-year warranty. Yeah, they right? have a three-year warranty. Three-year warranty. Okay. Yeah. Come on down, give me a call, and I'm the one that will basically inspect the tank for you. I'll look it over, um, and that's going to be a manufacturer defect. Um, a lot of guys will, <clears throat> you know, when you have all this equipment, you install the tank somewhere where the heat gets to it, it starts melting a big old hole. That unfortunately isn't covered by the warranty. That's more of a user error. Uh, if you start getting, uh, even on your older tanks that you've bought from somewhere else, you start getting cracks or you start getting, uh, let's say, uh, somebody shot a, a gun and then made a hole here, you can give us a call. We sell bulkheads. If you're not experienced installing a bulkhead, we can install it for you here as well. I'll basically look at the damage and I'll give you a quote on how much it'll cost to repair it. I normally try to go the bulkhead uh, route. Uh, the reason why is because the bulkhead will actually cut off the damage section and a little bit um, on the outer of it. When it's a plastic tank and you have a pin sized hole, that hole is basically a center point and then it'll start basically cracking. It'll look like, kind of like lightning. Like when, glass. Yeah, like, glass. like on your car yeah. whenever a rock hits it. If you don't so you, fix it mm, fast, yeah, it, it starts start to crack. Yeah. Okay. So basically when I install the bulkhead, that cuts out the damaged area. The damaged area is always bigger than what it is. Um, and we'll cut that out for you and install the bulkhead. Um, and I try to normally install between a one inch to two inch bulkhead. Um, a lot of guys will be like, oh, well, I want a three inch. When we get with a three inch bulkhead, they're really massive. So you're talking about a three inch inside diameter. So if, to compensate, the outside has to be a lot larger. Uh, let me see if I can grab a two inch bulkhead and I'll show you how kind of big it is. Why would they want a three inch on there? Some customers would want a three inch just because they either have a, a future project for it. They want to put a bigger intake on it or out. Um, some people just think a three inch is, is it's what, what they need. So when we install a two inch bulkhead here, I actually use a three inch hole saw. Here's a one and a two. Yeah, so see the big difference? This is a one inch and these are always ID inside diameter. And this is a two inch. So now for me to cut this out, I need three inches. When I cut this one out, it is like an inch and three quarters. So when, I when I'm doing a three inch bulkhead, you can only imagine how big it is, it's probably bigger than my hand. Um, and when you're talking about putting it on it's a 65. It's also more surface area for water yeah. to seep out. Yes, that too. And so when yeah, you're talking perfect. about a 65. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The two inch is perfect. Yeah. And so when you're talking about a 65, a, fi a 550, they're pretty, they, they, you get more, you gotta take away more room, uh, especially when you do on the corner or on the other side. When you're talking about this one, this will be as big as we can go. You see all the little play that it has. When you get a bigger bulkhead, yeah, you play. have more play. And that means that this flat side can't squish up against this rounded side. And you have a poor gasket. And then you have a poor gasket yeah. and then you're just prone okay. to failure. So a lot of guys that want to do this at home, do not install a three inch bulkhead on the side, please. I get a lot of phone calls trying to see how to fix it. And unfortunately my answer is always, well, you kind of have to scrap the tank now. Yeah. I learned something new from you. Every time you talk about <laughs> tanks, I'm like, I know. like, I'm like, I'm like, I, I didn't, like, I didn't even so think about that. I'm like, and all, I'm piecing this stuff together because 
I didn't even know that that was a way that you could patch a tank is whenever you have a, a, a and I have had somebody that accidentally shot a hole in their yeah, tank. It's a very because people that thing. are in the it's yeah, common it's thing. It's, common it's, thing it's here. people that live out in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes they shoot in their backyard. Sometimes they aren't a great shot and hit their tank. It's I've actually seen that happen. You said that and I go. That's not far fetched. I've had one customer yeah. shoot their tank. This keeps <laughs> popping up in the background. You want to. Just talk about this special yes. project. So this right here is, 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 is a custom build that Fred did. This is a 7,000 PSI, a four gallon a minute. This is specifically just to clean metal. That is its the purpose is to clean metal, metal surfaces. Um, it was designed in a way, uh, it's specifically designed for barge ships. Uh, it's 483 phase. It's going to have a 20 horsepower electric motor, uh, and it's going to be, at 1800 RPM, so it's about the equivalent of a 25 to 27 horsepower motor. It's 20 horsepower, 1800 RPM. What does that mean? It's a true direct drive. There's no belts, there's no gearbox, there are no problems. It's directly coupled to the pump. The pump's rated for 1800 RPMs. The motor is rated for 1800 RPMs. I wish that this is something that we could do for the gas powered market because this means I never have to change belts. I never have to have a leaky gearbox. I never have to have a timing belt bust. This is as perfect as it gets. I really wish Honda and Kohler had an adaptation, but there's just not, they don't see a big enough market for them to do that. Uh, the, the motors, would, essentially what it has is it's got a female insert for the shaft to go inside the motor and the motor and the, and the shaft just goes directly in the motor. It was designed to have the shaft insert and then the motor runs at 1800 RPM. So this can still pull water from a tank as a direct drive. Just It runs just like a belt drive. It's 1800 RPMs. So that's something that's real unusual about this. Um, but this is just a, a, a little, and it's really easy to move around. You, this is the, this motor could pump uh, 4,000 PSI at eight gallons a minute. It can do 5,000 at five and a half easily. Uh, and it can also do 7,200 PSI at four, but we have the pumps rated for, I think 7,300, but we have it rated just at seven. And so, I actually have a question for you, Marco. Yes. So seeing this, I see a big old fan back here. If I was, you know, to purchase this and go into a bar chip, um, what do I have to look out for when I'm out there? What do, what do I have to look out that I'm able to damage? So here's the main reason why this is a thing. On those barge ships, they're not allowed to use chemicals ever. Okay. And so what the reason why they ask for this is they want the extra pressure because they are actually damaging the metal intentionally because they have all that scale, but they can't use F9 or One Restore or, 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 or even oxalic acid powder it's not allowed on the ship they're not supposed to have it at all and so the main thing that you do have to worry about is trip hazards because you do have a wire they're operating forklifts on a regular basis on the ship you got to be mindful of things like that you also want to make sure that you have a good way to have this to stop so it doesn't roll around as the ship sh uh, ship shifts those are the, the, the major things that they've discussed with me. I have no experience washing on a ship. I just know of some of the problems that they have that they have told me about. And this was designed in a way that they wanted us to have it made for them. Uh, and they wanted to have it to where it could eat because they have uh, three phase power all over the ship. And they wanted to have it to where they can run 200 feet of pressure hose, clean the barge, and then relocate this with ease, go 200 feet down where they have another water source. And since it's four gallons a minute, you can just directly feed it to a garden hose adapter. It doesn't have to be, uh, you do not have to have it feed it from a tank. So that's uh, pretty much it. There's, there's, there's not much to it. You just gotta make sure that this wire is protected on a ship. I'm assuming that they would be coning it off so that it's not a hazard, so that people aren't riding, because riding a forklift over this can cause us a fire. Yeah. Mm. And do we sell any type of, uh, like the coning, do we sell that for this, or something that they can go buy and wear? So cones, that is something that I've actually wanted to start selling, because I realize commercial cleaners, industrial cleaners, they all need cones all the time. Um, people have been, I've sent people to Northern Tool to buy their cones. 
I would love to be a supplier for cones. I just don't know what even our demand is. I'd actually love to get a survey to see if people would buy cones from us if we did stock them because I know a lot of commercial wash fleet washers yeah, uh, post construction. Let us know. Would you buy cones from Washmark? Road, right? Yeah, because uh, one thing I remember was uh, we were doing a post construction cleaning in Baytown and they were still operating and installing all the electrical and the company that was installing all the electrical lines, they ran the forklift over my two wire hundred foot hose Ooh. and it busted. And it's not just the fact that it cost me money that it busted, but it's also now created a hazard. And so I feel like if I would have had cones up in my workspace to work around other construction companies that were there while we were doing the cleaning, it could have prevented that from happening. And that really could have been, because whenever a pressure hose busts, it doesn't just bust, it does all this. And so when something, let's say that something would have happened there, who would have been liable? You, right? You would have been liable for the damage? It's or... going to be whoever has the best attorney. There we go. It could have been the forklift operator. It could have been us. It just who can afford the best attorney, if, if you really want me to answer that honestly. Coming and, from my background, that's... And being a police officer, if you saw someone with cones outside, that will kind of make you... What? It'll make you... It would make me realize or... that the person is actually more attentive to safety than just washing. It's going to put me more at ease that this person knows what they're doing because there's a lot of washers that don't use cones at all. I, I've noticed, I drive around at night and I see people washing at gas stations and they get so pissed off for people driving over all of their equipment. I've had people complain about people driving over their surface cleaner and they have no cones up. Yeah. We have, uh, we don't just have cones, we have cones with that say our washers on them. You know, so we even know that there are cones. Um, if you're doing work for the city or TxDOT, they have to be at least 30 inches in height. Just going to throw that oh, out there, those little that. short cones, yeah. those are not DOT compliant. They have to be at least, uh, I believe it's 30, I have to double check that. No, it's 30 feet apart whenever doing public roadway. The inches, it's 20 to 30. I have a cone right here that's DOT compliant. Okay. Whatever height this one is, this is DOT compliant. You'll be able to see how tall it is next to me. This, this height. So whatever this is. So actually it's going to be two feet. It's probably two feet. But this is what is required for dock compliance. Those little short cones, just because you're trying to save money, they don't matter. They're not going to protect you whenever you're dealing with text dot if you're doing pr uh, projects on the roadway. And the law in Texas is... No more than 30 feet apart. If you have, if you're washing a sidewalk on the side of a highway and these are 50 feet apart because you're trying to save money and TxDOT catches you, you can be fined and they can shut your work site down. And you might not see the fine for months. It's, they'll videotape you and then they'll report it to their director and then you'll get fined later. And then they'll prevent you from getting a TxDOT work permit later for people that have done TxDOT work. They know what a text dot work permit is. They can prevent you from getting them in the future. So they could be less than 30 feet apart, but no more than 30 feet apart. So how I usually measure that is two car links. For every two car, like imagine two Honda Civics, bumper to bumper, that's about the distance that you need the cones apart whenever you're having the work site. You also have to have a work zone ahead and end work zone sign for people that are getting into that work. Oh. Yes, yeah, that is required by tax doc compliance. Um, we don't really cover that on a lot of these videos, but I don't think yeah, anybody I covers that. I never knew that actually. Yes, you have, so I have Nine those. years, I did not know. And that, that's why exactly why I asked because you have all these pressure washing guys and that just like Marco really said, is. you're driving on the you're driving on the road and they, you know, he's power washing, who, you may not hear. Who can make those signs? Brenton Spry can make those signs over at uh, over at Richard E. Spry. Uh, they do. They can do pretty much anything. Uh, they can they all customize your cones. I think he. Act, you know what? I need to get a hold of them because I'm pretty sure they can do the cones. Now that I'm I'm processing this, I need to give him a call because that just came to my mind. But he can actually do the cones as well. Uh, oh, but um, that's for people that do homeowners associations. People associate homeowners associations as residential work. It's commercial. Whenever you're cleaning a wall. Oh, Britain's watching. Hey, Britain. Britain, no, Britain's on there watching right now. <laughs> Britain, 
put a link to your website and comment if you can get traffic cones with their company name that's on there and if you can do road work signs like begin work zone, end work zone because we're probably gonna have someone watch this and say, I need this. It took me a really long time because I tried locally, it was really hard for me to just find those signs. Online, they're not really easy to find because they have to be a certain size to be text doc compliant. And so if you go on Amazon, they have work zone signs, but just because it's on Amazon doesn't mean they're text doc compliant. So you have to make sure, and they also have to have a certain type of reflective, and I don't, they have a certain specs uh, that that has to have as far as them being reflective. Um, those are items that you have to have. There are also other stipulations for doing these work zones um, that you need want to look into if you're getting into washing miles of sidewalks or if you're washing bridges. What I mean by bridges is like, you know, the overpasses on a highway and you're pressure washing those. You're going to have to follow all these rules if you're wanting to get into this type of work. And this type of work, it's very rewarding. I mean, you can make anywhere from two to $6,000 a day with just one operator, but there's a lot of equipment that you have to invest in and space you have to invest in to store it. One thing I am interested in doing is renting cones out in the future. That's something that we actually discussed. Amber's mom, Cindy, actually did that for a living. She rented out road work barricades, cones, the signs. There is a, a market for that. Um, but I need people here to know whenever I'm driving by and I see you washing a wall and there's no cones, no signage, TxDOT is also seeing that there's no cones and no signage and that you're not following the rules. And if you're washing without a TxDOT permit, that can cause you a serious problem. If you're shutting down a lane of the roadway and you're parked on the road and you're not getting a tech stop permit, you absolutely can get fined. Any law enforcement officer can also find you for that. It doesn't have to be a trooper as far as that's concerned. Ask me how I know. So this is Marco. Yes, Chris. Chris <laughs> thank you for watching the video. And Amber's recording. Do you want me to hold it for you, Amber? No. No? Thank you.